Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Teemu and I'm an associate professor at the School of Arts, Design and Architecture in Helsinki, Finland. I'm going to tell today for you about new media design and, and trying to open up what is new media design and what kind of impact it has to our modern society at the moment around the world, almost everywhere. Uh, my professorship is about new media, new media design and learning. And, and often when I tell people that what is my work about, people start to think about related to new media, things like web design, social media, internet, interaction design and, and human-computer interaction and things like that. Often also mobile application, computer games, even interactive uh, media art, as I come from School of Arts and Design and Architecture. So, um, these are the things which people normally relate to new media, and, and they are correct. These are the topics we, we worked on under the term new media. But when we combine new media with learning or learning environments, which is my specific area of, of research, uh, people often think that, okay, well, if you relate new media and these digital things with, with, with learning, uh, comes issues like e-learning or educational technology, educational software and, and, and also probably learning theories and pedagogical issues. And again, people are right. This is what is new media about. Um, however, I want to make today, today a point that new media is much more. It is mu much more broader uh, concept. It has uh, effects to different areas of, of modern life, but they can be uh, discussed and, and considered and studied in the context of, of learning as well, in a broader understanding of learning again. Um, so, um, new media is a bit of like an anti-discipline. Often it's disruptive and, and out of control. Uh, there's a lot of space to think different, to ask why not. And that's what new media designers are often doing. I will open up the, the issue of new media through three people. I will present to you Citizen Kane, Ada Lovelace and Samuel F. B. Morse. Um, we all know these characters from the history of film, from computer science and communication technology. And maybe a bit surprisingly, they are also related to, to new media. Um, I'm sure you remember the, the Citizen Kane from, from the name with the same title. And, and, and behind the Citizen Kane, there's a real person, Mr. William Randolph Hartz, who was a newspaper editor and who built his media empire by balancing between certain idea, noble idea of, of, of bringing uh, information and news for people to serve the democracy, but on the other hand, uh, got corrupted too with the connections to politics, and, 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 and that's what the movie is about, and also the character behind the movie. Uh, later in his career, he also got interested in entertainment, which is an interesting uh, change in the in the story of the movie. He he got fascinated about the Hollywood and and get involved with 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 entertainment. Uh, and of course, he made a, made the fortunes with the with the newspaper and, and entertainment publishing industry. Um, Ada Lovelace, you probably uh, is not that well known as as the other other characters in 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 my presentation. But but lately, Ada been been uh, getting a more more fame because she was uh, one of the first programmers, computer programmer, and, and she worked precisely with algorithms. So uh, her contribution to computer science is really, really important today. Most of the internet services we know today, like Google or Facebook and so on, they rely on algorithms. That is the thing which makes the services as they are today. Um, it's interesting that Ada is, is not that well known as many other uh, big names in the history, history of computing, but really lately he, she been getting a more, more fame and, and now you can meet uh, people who be naming their they babies as Ada and you may guess from that that which industry the parents work at. Uh, the third person is, is the Samuel Morse, which is uh, of course well known from the Morse goat, the alphabets where Every letter is represented by combination of long and short signals. Uh, it has a connection to computers too. You know the computers work with the code. But uh, 
his innovation was made for communicating in distance. Practically before the Morse alphabet and the system, uh, it was not possible to communicate long distances in, the, in, in that speed, uh, practically in speed of sound and, and light. So these three characters represent three different domains, for sure, in, in human life and, and in, the, in the modern history of, 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 of industrial society, we could say, in, in the last 200 years. And we can name that, that the Citizen Kane represents the media, uh, Samuel Morse, the network communication field, and, and Ada Lovelace, then computing. Um, so how does media computing and network communication related to new media? I'm coming back to this topic in the end of the, of the lecture or talk, but now I want to open up a bit of the new media in, in, in our time through uh, some examples from the field. So uh, for me, new media is first and foremost social. More than anything else, New media is linking people. New media is linking people that are collaborating, sharing, trading, learning, socializing, and even dating today. So it is a uh, form or another having impact to human life, all, all across of human life and social life. Um, and that's why it's, it's quite interesting thing. Um, there's a lot of new social practices with new media and, and those social practices are really forcing us to rethink many things, what's been kind of things which been set during the industrial society of the last 200 years. Uh, we really need to reconsider, for instance, things like what is intellectual property, what is authorship, what is privacy, what is covenants, and what is ethics and, and, and aesthetics in times of new media, when more and more life is mediated with these network uh, applications and, and social media uh, environments. And, and when everyday life is changing to these uh, new forms where, where, where many things are different, for instance, copying things is, is practically cost zero, it opens up us to reconsider these big questions, really, really big questions. I hope you will think these big questions when I'm coming to these, my three examples of, of new media um, and new practices enhanced by it. So there's always the application side, the technology side, and then there's the social practices uh, built around them. In a way, in a, in, a, in a quite close collaboration, often the social practices are defining the technology and the technology is enhancing and making possible to certain things. Um, so my examples of new media come from the different era and has a different scope and different size. Um, the, the first one is by nature local and most recent, just a year ago in, in Helsinki area. The second one is international and from, uh, from uh, five years back. And the third one is the biggest one and probably the most famous one, you, you for sure know that. It's already 12 years old and, and global and, and still going very strong. But let's start with the first one, the local example. Um, it's called Sivos Päivä in Finnish. The English transla translation is Cleaning Day. It's a biannual, one-day, carnival-like event with the slogan, let's make the whole city a flea market. The idea was started by Paulina Seppälä, a journalist and researcher who is quite well networked, has probably a few hundred friends on, on Facebook, and she posted a status on a Facebook that why couldn't there be a one day when you could sell, kind of have a flea market all around the city, any street corner, anybody could start a flea market stand and start to sell their old stuff in there. And this really took over on a Facebook. In a couple of days, 5,000 people, mainly in Helsinki, had present their interest to take part in this. So <clears throat> to make this real, uh, which then happened a bit later, we invited, or Paulina invited, new media designer to make a website for, for, the, for the event and inviting people to mark on a Google map where they are planning to have their cell point. 
and, and people came and suddenly there were few hundred people, few thousand people who were uh, willing to take part in this event and it took place. Now it's been taken two times, there will be another coming and, and it looks like it's establishing itself as this kind of biannual event in, in Helsinki area. Um, so we can think about how this could have been organized without the new media, without the Facebook, without the website where people could mark on a, on a Google map they, they, they places. It would have never happened. Um, none of the big media companies could have organized this, neither the city of Helsinki as an authority could have generated such a movement where people want to, want to do these things. So um, we don't really know what will happen in the future with, with this thing, but, but we may expect that it's, it will stay. There is enough of, of, of certain grassroots activity around them. People may change, but they will organize it, pretty self-organized uh, event annually, hopefully twice a year. And it may become international. We don't know. The, the scaling is not an issue. Uh, next time, there might be in Sweden and Norway cleaning days on the same day, or, or, or they, may, they may expand internationally. My other example is uh, something called Massive Open Online Course, or MOOCs. And this is something which, which I was more closely involved than the cleaning day. I was consulting the cleaning day uh, thing, but, but this I, I really did, did with, with my colleagues. Um, I was 2007 uh, for a year in, in California visiting the SRI International in Palo Alto. And going over there, uh, I was still holding a responsibility to run one course back in my home university in Helsinki. So I proposed for for Professor Marti Raivara, who was responsible of the, of the program, that could it be so that I organized it online uh, uh, with the, as an online course? And then I proposed that could we make it open so that anybody could join, anybody could come, uh, whoever wants to come around the world and, 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 and take the course. And for Marti, that was a great idea. We, we discuss about it, that it might be even better course if we have not only eight students of, of, of our own program, but also opening it, it up internationally and, and people could come and join. So we set up the, the course on a wiki website. Wiki is a website where anybody can edit the things. And, and then we set the day when it will start. People came and, and we organized the course. It ended up to be a nine week course where we were having eight art education students. Those were our own students. But then 64 students came from just from internet. Whoever was free to join the course and take the course. There were students from North and South America, Europe and, and, and Africa. Um, the organization of the course was so that we have weekly video conference sessions. Every Monday people got together on a, on a video conference. We discussed that what is the program of this week and then we did assignments and all those assignments were made in a, openly on a blog. So every person was having their own public blog and those assignments were done on those. Um, <clears throat> Later, this type of courses has been organized around the world. The massive open online courses has become a real phenomenon of its own. Many of the big universities, universities are organizing these things today. But, uh, but I think we were uh, quite happy to make it differently in the first time we did it. it. It was open for anybody to join. It was a bit like an open university online. Anybody was free to come and anybody was free to even take part in the planning of the course. We didn't set up the course. It was on a wiki and people could edit the program uh, b before a few weeks we started the course. So. <clears throat> This kind of new forms of teaching and learning and, and experimenting with new media design uh, is, is really in the core of my research. Um, it's something I want to do with my, my research to, to experiment with collaboration forms, how, how people will uh, learn with the new tools, what, what kind of new formats we could have with, when we use the digital technology more, more efficiently. My third example is, is actually my long-time love, something I've been involved for for years. It is the Wikipedia. 
Um, and obviously it is probably the, the most beautiful example of new media project of, of our time. The history of Wikipedia is actually quite interesting. It was found in 2001 by Jimmy Wales as an exper experimental site. Uh, uh, it was a, a site project of another project, which was the encyclopedia called Newpedia. So Jimmy was interested in to build an online encyclopedia, try to make it first in a very traditional way by inviting experts to write articles, but it didn't really took off. After working this way, there wasn't that many articles. Uh, same time, the wiki was invented. The idea that you could set up a website which anybody can edit. And Jimmy wanted to experiment, could one build an uh, uh, encyclopedia by with the idea anybody may edit these articles. And it really took off. Uh, if we look today, the Wikipedia, if the fifth most visited website in the world, uh, there's 23 million articles in almost 300 langu languages, 80,000 volunteers, edi editors, and a lot of donors who are making it possible to keep the lights on. So, of course, this costs money to run the servers and, and keep things going on. Um, later, with the Wikipedia, which was started again a bit like a SIVO spy or something, or the cleaning day, something people just got together to work on building an encyclopedia. Uh, uh, later in the process, it was obvious that we need to establish something which will make it sure that it will stand for hundreds of years coming. So nowadays there is a foundation which is running the, the servers and doing promotion of the Wikipedia and making sure that it will not die off in, in the years coming. And for the, for the movement there is a quite clear vision statement. Imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. So this defines the current activities of the of the Wikipedia, how it, how it is built. And from the mission statement we can read things like that it will be multilingual, it will be global, it will try to reach all the people of the world. Okay, <clears throat> now I will in the end get, get back to these three characters I was presenting in the beginning, the Citizen Kane, uh, Ada Lovelace and, and Samuel F. B. Morse. And I hope you think now, those my examples in light of what I'm presenting now on. Uh, it's been discussed a lot of this, that these fields been merging. They've been uh, coming uh, together, the computing, the media, and the network communication. And uh, we may even play a bit with, with this idea and think about that if we think these characters are some kind of uh, uh, archetypes of, of their fields, how would they combine or how would be their babies if we combine computing and network communication or computing and media or media and network com communications and even these characters of, of Ada Lovelace and, and, and for instance Samuel Morse. So <clears throat> if we think that what comes up when, we, when you take computing and network communications it's obviously mo mobile phone. Uh, suddenly Network communications, the next step after the Morse was the telephone, the wired line telephone. But when combining it with the digital things, suddenly it was possible to have a mobile phone. So we could play with the, with the idea that if Ada and, and Samuel Morse would have a child, he would be Jorma Ollila, who came up with the, with the, with the Nokia idea of, of coming up and building up the mobile phone, as it is and we know today. Um, then we can take two other fields. We take the media and network communication and, and think about that what is in the crossing points of these two areas of research or innovation or, or even industries. And quite obviously comes the television. It builds on the media idea but it's networked, especially satellite television is a good example of this. And now we can play with the idea that if, if Citizen Kane and, and Morse would have a, a child he would be, uh, according my point of view, most likely uh, Rub Rupert Murdoch, for instance, who who been working with the newspapers and then, of course, with the satellite television. And finally, if we combine media and computing and think about who would be 
in the in the who would be the child of Adan and Citizen Kane, I would claim that that is, for instance, CD-ROM was the idea of having the media making it on a digital format and then distribute it that way. And and as a joke, a bit we could say that Bill Gates didn't get the internet in the early days, was doing encyclopedia on a CD-ROM, the Encarta, and was relying on that that the PC is the end of the computing and we can bring media into there. But uh, <clears throat> my point with, uh, with the new media is that there's a certain area when this merging been coming which has been building up a new emerging thing and that is in the center. That is the new media. Things like the cleaning day, the massive open online courses or the Wikipedia would never happen from these existing areas but only in the center which was a, like an empty space to come up and innovate. Similar way if we think companies in the center there are things like Google or, or Amazon or, or Facebook and so on. So there's a really interesting new area where new forms of collaboration and learning is taking place. Uh, thank you for your attention and I uh, hope that you enjoyed. <laughs>